All right, everybody, let's talk. I have spent the day reading newspapers, watching the like old school, like childish. He's ugly. He's got an orange skin. He's this, he's that. And everybody is just preoccupied with like the most dumb nonsense ever. I mean, people are focused on anything but what we can do to take our power and, and really make change. These jackasses in Arizona are passing bills to try and go back on the gold standard and everybody else is focused on with Donald Trump. I, I don't know what to do with this. You've got people that say they're progressive but yet want to take away the very vehicle that would give us any means of delivering a progressive agenda. When I post things, I watch progressives fire out and say, who is this guy? Who is this troll that's infecting our wonderful thread bashing Trump who's trying to guide us towards fixing that which is broke. Who is this troll? And as I sit there and I watch and I say to myself, this is what we've got to work with? This is what we've got to work with, really? Over and over and over. They're focused on the color of Trump's tanning bronze. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. And they think that it's cute to get back to talking about how awful the GOP is, as if the Democrats have suddenly come to say, the day. Now, for those of you who still believe the Democrats are here to save the day, where have you been? Have we been living in the same country? Have we been doing anything that matters over the last, I don't know, 10, 12, 40 years? Some guy piped off in a thread, and this is no joke. He goes, oh my God, Trump is just going to get the printing presses going and crank out money, isn't he? And I thought to myself, this is the left. Welcome to the left. This is my team, supposedly. And I think to myself, you do realize that when your team is in office and you attempt to tell them how important it is to spend on the 99%, you do realize that the very sword you used in a worthless fashion to critique Donald Trump and his band of fools, you do realize that the very sword you break out the very idiocy that is spewed will be used against us to save the planet. It will be used against us when we try to get single payer. It will be used against us when we try to fix anything. Because worthlessness begets worthlessness. Idiocy begets idiocy. And that's how this game is played, back and forth. And then you've got people that don't really know what the hell to do. They really don't know what to do. So what do they do? They follow the fool that's got the loudest voice. They follow the fool with the loudest voice. We have work to do, folks. Our team is too small. The people that are truly woke 
on the progressive side, I'm talking to my people right now. Our team is not woke. No matter how many of you got your arm busy doing this stuff, pat yourself back, look how woke I am. Trust me, you got that frog lens over your eyes. You're still blind. You're still out. The lights aren't fucking firing. And I'm not angry. I'm a little depressed. A little sad. A little spooky spooky. You know, when I see the fact that the progressive movement is willing to follow, follow these dumb people. I'm reading the Free Thought Project. Unfortunately, many in our mists read the Free Thought Project. Unfortunately, they're just as dumb as Occupy Democrats. They're just as stoopfuck as Occupy Democrats. The only difference is they claim to be woke as fuck. But they're really just a bunch of fucking snake sailing liars. Snake oil lying fools. These bastards are still talking about money devaluation. Worthlessly talking about devaluation, which is worthless thinking because we're no longer on the gold standard. The only way to devalue money is to have a set pie of gold or a set pie of commodity or a set pie of something. And then you split it off. But these worthless people say worthless things that cause untold harm to us. And they claim to be progressive. They claim to be brothers in arms in the fight. I, I can't even focus on the quote unquote other side because our side is asleep at the wheel. When I see someone railing on Donald Trump, I know that they're out like a light. Their brain is like turned off. They've shut down. When I see them realize, not remembering that we're in a war <clears throat> with or without Donald Trump, we're in a war for the soul of progressivism. We're in a fucking war, a hardcore war. Let me tell you something. These same bozos, these morons, they skew libertarian. They skew libertarian. And they're hellbent on focusing on the Federal Reserve. These worthless folks don't understand, but they speak as one with authority. That's where the worthlessness kicks in. It's not that they don't know. It's that they speak as though they have authority. Their worthlessness kills people. That level of worthlessness is a cancer. And it's just as bad as the GOP. It's every bit as bad in its reality, in the things that actually impact us. It's every bit as bad as Donald Trump. This is no joke. When you strap your currency to a commodity, you literally cut the available policy space by which you can save your country, save your environment, save your children, get us health care, do any of that stuff. You literally eliminate policies. You literally do. So when you watch people that really can't, if you ask a question, please explain to me how you're paying for green energy. How are we going to get there? We're going to divest. We're going to this. We're going to that. That's good. That's a personal decision. But that's not going to solve anything. The reality is, that our government is the lone issuer in the world, or, well, you know, for our United States anyway, of dollars. So if we said, if we cared, if our government cared about us, right? And the reason it doesn't is because, well, first of all, we got a rigged elections. We got fucking worthless assholes that are bought and paid for by big corporations that are in representing us. We've got a whole slew of morons that sit there serving a master other than you and I. But that aside, we, we the people, 
are asleep. And when we, the people who are asleep, fear savings accounts at the Federal Reserve, and we don't do our homework, when our representatives do get in office, they do the things that they think that we think are okay. So here we are. How do we get green energy? Yeah, how do we get green energy? Our federal government could right now spend and invest in government-led R&D right now, just like it did with the internet, just like it did with NASA, hmm. just like it's done over and over and over before the neoliberal scourge. Now, Ellis has talked about this before, that in the 1970s, in a reaction, in a knee-jerk reaction to the inflation brought on by the uh, gas shortage, they instituted this whole process by which normal people, you and I, supplemented the economy by going deep in debt when the economy would shrink. And then we would go ahead and pay off our debt when the economy would boom. But the federal government itself would slow down on spending. It used to spend, no longer spends. So now all of a sudden, people who don't know any better are running around saying we got to end the Fed, 1913, Rothschild's creature of Jekyll Isle. They're not realizing that in 1971, when we removed ourselves from the gold standard, we also opened up an incredible amount of policy space. And by opening up that policy space, it gives us the freedom to spend on the 99% or the other side, spend on the military, spend on all these things that are bad for America, bad for you and I, spend on corporations, spend on imperialism, spend on all kinds of environmentally destructive behaviors, okay? Financializing the economy by pushing us into private debt and letting the wealthy make money off of our interest, okay? So we've stopped spending money on the things that matter. And so instead of understanding that the answer is to spend things on things that do matter, dodo birds run around saying we got to end the Fed. Well, the Fed doesn't actually do anything. The Fed controls interest rates. And interest rates are very, very low. Interest rates are extremely low. So it's not interest rates that are hurting us, is it? If interest rates are what the Federal Reserve controls in our lives, how are they hurting us? I mean, I'm just asking questions. It's Congress that's hurting us. Congress is the ones that are not spending on us. So if you know this to be true, if you can empirically show that the reason why you and I are FUBAR and the reason why our environment is FUBAR is because of an artificial scarcity of dollars in circulation for us the 99%, then why would you worthlessly blame the Federal Reserve? Why would you worthlessly do that? Is it a fetish? Is it some sort of bizarre S&M leather bound shit? Is it some like porn magazine these guys look at with their neck beards in the basement? and sit there and scour around and they see, hey, buy gold in the back of some bad porn mag, some manji or what manga or whatever it is they do? I don't know. It's got to be something. Because nobody with a brain thinks that way. I mean, what is it? They're horrible. 
But this is what's happening. And because we are not prepared to fight the battles ahead of us, we're sitting there talking about Donald Trump and his bronzing color. How progressive. Give yourself a good old pat on the back and a golf clap for being so focused on progress. So woke as fuck, right? Being woke is a tough job. You wake up in the morning, you're woke. You go to bed at night, you're woke. You do research, you're woke. When you see someone say something about devaluing the dollar because it's just worthless paper, you attack the shit out of them. You drop the elbow of truth on them. You teach. You teach those who are willing to learn and you smite those that are unwilling because they are domestic terrorists. When you gauge the version of terrorism by the color of someone's skin, or when you gauge the role of terrorism by the nation they come from, and you skip the fact that these people are literally killing us with idiocy, fetishizing gold, fetishizing ending the Fed, fetishizing anti-Semitic uh, behaviors, when you fetishize worthlessness, I think somewhere in the dictionary you look it up, oh shit, the guy that fetishizes that, worth, it's synonymous with the term worthless. Right? It says it right here. Seriously, it's right there. You can't have progress with people that are chasing the Rothschilds. You can't have progress with people chasing gold nuggets. You can't have progress with people that are talking about Donald Trump's orange skin. You can't have progress with people that don't do the investigation. When you put a link up and you sit there and you show the pertinent passage that says, look at this, this is very important for you to learn. And they call you a troll and they don't read. They are a barrier to progress. And shit's real. Climate change is real, folks. Environmental destruction is real, folks. It's not waiting on you to get your head out of your ass and decide to learn. It's not, it's not going on hiatus so you can get a case of the feels. It's not going on hiatus, man. Shit's going down. And they're ready. These morons sit there while they're playing in their basement with their Dungeons and Dragons, dreaming up a way to destroy the country and tear the dollar down. Talk about worthless pieces of paper. Give me your fucking worthless pieces of paper, dipshit. I'll take every one of them. Give them all to me. Shit, you don't need those worthless pieces of paper. Throw them over. Give them over yonder. I'll take them off your hands. I'll give you a 20-sided die you can take my 20-sided die and my four-sided die in replacement for all your p worthless pieces of paper. How's that? Maybe I'll give you my kids Jumanji cards or Dungeons and Dragons cards. Maybe I'll give you their, their freaking cards, their Robotron stuff, whatever it is that you guys do when you're down there playing with your neck beard, okay? Scratching your neck beard. Mom, fetch me turkey pot pie now, Mom. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about people that are just crazy. They sit there, keyboard warrior, trolling around. Gold, gold, gold. Gotta have gold. Devaluing gold, gold, gold. But this is real. That's the problem. You can make fun of it to keep your sanity. But the reality is, this shit's real. So you're going to go in. The GOP is act, right now actively pushing for a balanced budget amendment. You've got other states talking about going to a gold standard, wrecking the fucking currency. The one thing that we have 
that we can actually make progress with. These bastards are ready to tear it down. Now, why is that a problem? Because progressives are not ready to fight. Progressives are still worrying about the color of Trump's tanner. They're making memes about Donald Trump having a butthole for a mouth. Witty. Wow. At what point in time are you really a progressive? Does anybody give a fuck about their kids? At what point in time do you care so much about your kids that you fucking decide to learn instead of making all that time sitting there making a Donald Trump meme with a butthole for a mouth? At what point do you care about your children enough that you stop doing worthless things that destroy progress? At what point in time will you care about progress, real progress? Don't claim the be woke as fuck if you're busy worrying about Donald Trump. If you use the word cuck, chances are you're not woke as fuck. If you use the Trumponomics and Trumpa Loompa Loompa and you're sitting there doing all this stuff and you're not focused on learning and ready to fight this battle because it's a battle right here, folks. It's a battle for the heart and soul of our nation, for our children's future, for real. This is the kind of debt you really do have to worry about. This is the real debt that you will pass on to your children if you worthlessly worry about Donald Trump's tanner and don't worry about learning how our fucking finance system works. If you worthlessly focus on every tweet Donald Trump puts out there, if you worthlessly do a, a catered sit-in for guns, or if you worthlessly get into a tweet war with Donald Trump, and you're not out to activating your mind and activating the movement, if you're not actually doing something, this is woke as fuck stuff. This is the real deal. This is where the rubber meets the road. Talking conspiracies and all that stuff is self-masturbatory. It's just self-masturbation. We've got real shit that we can do right here, right now, serious stuff. To be ready to activate, to go to our town halls, to go to these meetings, our state meetings, where they're sitting there having these things and go and fight and show up in mass with signs and tell them, stop cutting spending, you bastards. Stop fucking around with our currency, you morons. Somebody who's kinder and gentler and sweeter needs to come around after we kick their ass and lift them up and say, it's okay, there's room for you in the fold. Steve had to kick your ass to get to the finish line, but I'm here to stroke you. That's good. We all, everybody's got a part to play, right? I personally have gotten to the point now where this is the real deal, man. You want to talk about serious balanced budget amendment? If that happens, slipping over and trying to win a, a, the deal and put us onto the gold standard again and destroy our monetary sovereignty? If you want to do that, this is the battle, folks. You can sit there and talk about this issue. You can talk about that issue. You can talk about all of them. But if you're sitting there chasing after fairy tales down rabbit holes and they sweep away and pull the gold standard back, every one of you can forget about progress. And you look at your kid and you go, hey, Johnny, I thought Donald Trump's tan line was more important than getting you single payer health care. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot, a loser, a microphone abuser, and I spew stupid shit. That's the deal, folks. If you can't activate on something, it's not worth our time. We don't have time to screw around. There's a million issues you can focus on, a million of them. And if you can't activate on them, 
Then you just shotgun scatter. You're just throwing pasta at the wall and seeing what sticks. There's a handful of things that we can focus on to really, really, really make progress. We've got to take the lessons learned from Bernie Sanders' pro, uh, platform. Every last one of them. We've got to take that. I don't care if you like him today or not. Bernie is Bernie. You leave, whatever. I don't care. I'm not here to defend Bernie. But I love his programs. I don't care whether you think he's a war hawk or he's an establishment or he kissed uh, Clinton you know, behind closed doors. I don't care. I love his platform. I love what he stood for. I love what he did for me. I love the Green Party's platform, minus their idiocy with this AMI crap, the positive money bullshit, okay? I love the Green platform other than that. And if you take those things right there, it all boils down to one thing, economics, economics. You can't get any of the things we want if you don't get this right, none of it. Not a bit of it. And you can see in our own midst, in our own midst, the people that claim to want these things have no idea how to get there. And they'd rather just go back to sleep than learn. And that's got to scare the shit out of you. That's our teammates, gang. That's our movement. That's our revolution. Fast and sleep. Donald Trump's got orange tanner, Cheeto man, Cheetos. You're fired. Oh, look at that bad comb over. That's what we're dealing with. Does not compute. Not for somebody woke. You can't be woke and act that way. You can't. You simply can't. So at the end of the day, keep your eyes out on the bugs. Keep your eyes out on the parasites trying to rob us of our currency who don't realize that it's Congress's job to spend money, not the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve defends a positive target interest rate. That's why they sell bonds, not to fund government because government is self-funding. Taxes don't fund spending, remember? As long as there's somebody there with fingers or a nose that can hit keys on a keyboard to enter deposits into a spreadsheet, we'll always have enough money. We'll always have enough money. AMI, let's talk about AMI. AMI goes right from Jump Street. The very first thing those motherfuckers fuck up, the very first thing these sacks of shit do, is lie about the idea, and it's a lie, it's a brazen lie, because it's been debunked, and yet they persist. So call them just like as bad as the ANCAPs, okay? But they're spreading the myth of this fractional reserve system that Ron Paul loves. You start to see the connections, right? The Ron Paul, LOL, Bertarian bullshit. Banks don't lend reserves. They're an accounting identity within the banking system. They don't leave the system. Banks don't lend reserves. Full stop. To talk about it beyond that is giving it credibility that it doesn't deserve. That's it. They lie from day one. Their very first point is that we got to democratize the dollar. Well, the dollar is already democratized. The reason why you get neoliberal shit out of the Federal Reserve when they do their monetary policy is because we keep electing neoliberals as president. The people that do the freaking appointments for the fucking board of governors, the decision makers, the deciders. It's not because the Federal Reserve is... Because guess what? Let's say we democratize the dollar. And all of a sudden, people realize how quacky and wacky these people are. And all of a sudden, the Republicans get back in power. Gosh, that never happens, does it? 
And now all of a sudden the Republicans have now democratized the dollar. Huh? You hearing me? Fools. The bottom line. It starts with a lie. Banks don't lend reserves. Banks don't create net new financial assets. When a bank loans money, it creates a bank denoted IOU in the shape of a dollar bill. But in the background, there's an in and there's an out. There's a deposit. There's something sitting. There's a double entry accounting. Okay. And you got a reserve sitting there waiting. And when the money comes in, when it's paid off, they get the money on the interest and the fucking account zeroes out. There's no net financial assets being created. It's a lie. So AMI is started and founded right from day one on a big motherfucking lie. That's it. Why do you go beyond that? It's like saying, well, the earth is flat, so let me tell you about the way the spin of the earth is. Well, I don't care about the rest of what you have to say. You said the fucking earth is flat. Go away. Go away, Count Chocula. Peter Pan. Go away. Are you here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail? I mean, what the fuck, man? Only Congress has the right to spend money into existence. And when Congress writes a bill, Congress sends it over. And deposits are made and money is spent into existence. That's it. Sing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. That's it. That is it. What fund spending? It's not taxes, it's Congress. So when people say, well, what? Steve said taxes don't fund spending at the federal level. So what does fund spending? Congress. Congress created the Fed. It's our central bank. Because guess what? During the Confederacy, the same bozos that want to go back to the gold standard, the same Dixiecrats, the same bull weevils, the same ANCAPs, all the fools down yonder, okay? Those same people. Now, they're no longer geographically centered to the south. They're all over the place. But those same people that didn't want the Confederacy to tax are the reason why the Confederacy hit. Hyperinflation. That's it. You have to tax in your own currency in order to force its acceptance and use. And that's what drives currency. Okay, it's simple. So what fund spending? Congress. Why do we tax? So that our dollar holds its value. So that it drives the acceptance. What happened back in the day? Well, we were all plowing in the field, picking strawberries, going fishing, huck fin style, you know, shooting Bambi, doing whatever it is we did back in the day. And then the government decided, hey, we need some roads. We want to open up some trade routes. How are we going to get a road built? I don't know. Chauncey's over there whittling a whittling a toothpick, and Billy Bob's over there. He's he's over there skinning a coon, and Johnny over there. Well, he's going out there cleaning some fish. How do we get them to stop doing that? We'll impose a tax, and we'll get them with our dollars to come over here and build us some roads. And thus it began. Okay. So now we're at this point where we realize taxes drive currency. That's it. Why in the world does the... <laughs> Let's have a laugh together for a minute, shall we? Why in the world does the government that has its own ability to print money have to borrow it from China? Um, excuse me, Ming, can, can we borrow some U.S. dollars from you? We're kind of hurting. We're skeebing. You got any more of those, those U.S. dollars? You got any of those U.S. dollars? People accept them on faith. And you know why they accept them on faith? Because if you don't pay your fucking taxes and dollars, you go to jail. Yeah. 
You didn't know that. Go to the IRS someday, drop a big old nugget of gold on the table and say, I'd like to pay my taxes. I'm here to pay my taxes. Got me some nugget gold. Got me a piece of nugget gold. How many per ounce? Uh, what, what's Ron Paul say tonight? How much is it? Peter Schiff, how much you saying the gold costs tonight? Well, I want to pay my, my, my taxes in this nugget of gold. Go away, sir. Taxes don't fund spending. We just delete the motherfuckers when we get them. When you send that piece of paper, it says your tax return. They says, okay, delete button, boom. Up oh, there, get $15, send them a check for 15 smackaronis. But that's how they delete the money out of the system. And then the, when they went spend money into it, that's how they replace it. And when you take in too much in taxes, like the Clintons did, with their vaunted surplus, which means they deleted more dollars from the system than they added to it, you have a fucking recession. But wasn't it really good that Bill Clinton had a surplus? He made W. 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 took that surplus and wasted it. He wasted the surplus. God, Clinton gave him a surplus. He gave him a surplus. You mean he deleted a fucking shit ton of taxes? I mean, what are you doing? Think about it. Most dollars, you never see the paper. Most dollars are just digital things sitting there in a spreadsheet somewhere. And they move this to here and this to here and this to here and this to here. But most dollars never make it by way of paper, do they? They don't. I mean, we're not even talking like close. Like many, many, many trillions of dollars are digital dollars. Most of them never see the printed paper, but the reality is they print so much money because most people don't really use the paper, but they have it and that's what circulates. But reality is you get direct deposit from your employer. You don't get a bunch of pieces of paper. They move shit back and forth. It's just keystrokes. But we're running out of keystrokes, Steve. Chauncey broke his finger. We haven't been able to get that one key that puts the extra one in there for almost a year. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, at some point in time, it's got to sound kind of funny, right? I mean, seriously. I mean, this, this does get tiring, but it's necessary because there's so many people that are sleeping at the wheel. And here's the thing. You want to have some fun? I'll give you some fun. Here's some good trolling, quality trolling, legendary trolling, okay? Go to these various groups, TYT, heck, even Jordan, love you, Jordan, even Jordan. Go over there to Robbie Reich. Go over there to Paul Krugman. Go to each of these politicians and go in there and literally light their boards up with telling the truth about economics. Light their boards up with economics. Light them up. Drop the elbow of truth on them with a thud. It's like, thunk. You know what I'm saying? Bam! Bam! That right there is a legendary troll waiting to happen. A troll with purpose. You get fun out of it because you know they don't understand. You get fun out of it because you need them to wake up. It's, all, it's only partially trolling. A lot of it's really education, right? But they need to understand how serious this is. I would hate, as smart and awesome as Jordan and TYT are, and they really are, they go out there and they cover things that nobody else is covering. Hats off to Jordan Sheraton. Okay, for real. All jokes aside, for real. But when you understand what I'm talking about and Jank and those guys blow it off like it's no big deal, like, eh, you know, you say tomato, I say tomato, but they don't understand. It's up to us to make them understand. It's up to us to get in the ear of every one of these activists. You know, it's one thing to block a pipeline. It's another thing to have the brains and the ability to force green energy to back that up. You can't block a pipeline if you don't have green energy waiting for you. You need one or the other. You see what I'm saying? Sadly, one kills us, the other saves us. But you can't have one without the other. 
This is elementary. It's elementary. So you tell them, hey guys, listen, the GOP is fighting for a balanced budget amendment. Did you know that? Why don't you cover it, guys? Hey, Kyle, Kyle, why don't you cover the stuff about the balanced budget shit? Hey, Kyle, why don't you cover this? Hey, Kyle, why don't you cover these gold bugs trying to destroy our currency? Why don't you cover what a real current accounts deficit is? Hey, why don't you guys really cover the economics that's driving our inability to have single payer? It's not just the bad Republicans. They're bad, but many of them are uneducated. Many of those Republicans, if you talk to them and explain to them these things and took the time to learn it yourself first and then each one teach one, many of them love their kids just as we do and maybe more in some cases. They just don't know any better. So stop sitting there talking about Donald Trump's orange skin. Stop talking about Bannon's bad hairdo. Stop worrying about whether Hillary Clinton has pneumonia or Parkinson's disease. Stop worrying about these stupid, worthless things and start focusing on the things that matter. Because seriously, think about this. You guys, we got what, 150 people watching right now? That's great. Maybe by tomorrow morning, 10,000 people will have watched this. That's great. No kidding. That's wonderful. I'm thankful for that. But the problem is, and this is a problem, by 2018, how many of these vote blue sycophants are just going to say, well, eh, whatever, we'll just go with it. We'll just go with the way they always did it. And they'll be right back to sleep. We've got to be human alarm clocks, folks. Human truth bombs. Human truth bombs. Or the neoliberal scourge will destroy us while the fascist scourge kills us as well. There will be no hope if we don't have the tools in our tool pouch to do this battle. And this battle is not one talking about orange skin and bad tan lines. No bad comb-overs are going to get this battle won. The battle that is going to be won is one where we talk to them about saving our children from the stupid shit they do economically. That's it. That's the real deal. So when you see these other progressives out there, heck, Lee Camp, talk to Lee, ask Lee. Lee's a good guy. He's a sharp guy. Ask Lee. Go out there and ask the progressive army. I'll give a Noah and Ben Dixon a shout out. Ask them if they understand MMT. If you see eyes glazed over, educate them. If you talk to Jenk, ask him. If you see his eyes glaze over, he tries to change the subject. Don't let him change the subject. Keep it focused. If you see any of these folks not focus on economics, be a human. Be a human truth bomb. That's what we got to do. I don't have a wedding ring. I'm not married. I'm engaged to a beautiful woman named Melanie. Anyway, bottom line is, if you want your kids, and you want your family, and you want it to be healed, you must take action. You must take action, I know. Feed's choppy, sorry about that. I'm sorry. That's what happens with live streams. My live streams, anyway. So with that, I'm Steve Grumbine, hoping you guys take the truth to the streets. Take it to the streets. Take it everywhere you go. Never shut down, never turn off, never stop fighting. Demand they hear you. Demand it.
and don't accept no for an answer. And if they can't answer the question, tell them that you can and be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within. I'm Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives. You have a great night, everybody.